The cocaine had me froggy. I saw the floor indicator stop at floor number two. I took the stairway to the lobby. I dropped the key on the desk and glided to the street. The cocaine had fitted wings on my feet. I felt cool, breathless, and magnificent. It was a balmy 80 degrees. I was glad I'd left the Benny. I walked toward a rainbow bouquet of neon maybe ten blocks away. My senses screamed on the razor edge of cocaine. It was like walking through a battlefield. The streaking headlights of the car arcing the night were giant tracer bullets. The rattling, crashing streetcars were army tanks. The frightened, hopeless black faces of the passengers peered through the grimy windows. They were battle-shocked soldiers doomed forever to the front trenches. I passed beneath an L-train bridge. A terrified, glowing face loomed toward me in the tunnel's gloom. It was an elderly white man trapped behind enemy lines. A train furled by overhead. It bombed and strafed the street. The shrapnel fell in gritty clouds. I was too nervous for the combat zone. I whistled a general in a yellow staff car to halt. He whisked me to that oasis of neon. It turned out he was a mercenary. He shafted me a slat and a quarter for the evacuation. I got out and mothed towards a haggling flash. The funhouse. It was a bar. I opened the door and stepped inside. It almost busted the gaskets in my bowels. A phosphorescent green skeleton popped up out of the floor in front of me. It screeched a hollow howl and then dived back into the floor through a trap door. I just stood there shaking. I couldn't figure why those crazy jokers at the bar were yucking like pickaninnies. To stay with the program, I mastered a kingfish grin. I went to the bar and sat between Amos and Andy. I saw a tall stud with a Frankenstein mask on behind the log. He darted his hand in a sneaky way under the log. There was a whooshing noise like a tire going flat. My stool descended beneath me. I looked up at Amos. My nose was an inch from the log. Amos was grinning down at me. Amos said, You sure enough ain't been here before, is you slim? You from the Bigfoot country? Andy said, Well, till he catches wind, he gonna buy us a pitch of suds. We gonna learn, old homeboy, about this big city rigmarole. Everybody at the crowded log yucked in a deep southern accent. Frankenstein pushed his mercy button. I felt the stool stretching up. With the cocaine kangarooing me and this booby-trapped nest of low-life suckers I stumbled into, I had more than a frantic yearning for maybe 420 at the Haven. He walked down the log to me. He said, It's all in fun. Welcome to the fun house. What'll it be? I ignored him. I got off the stool. I looked down at it. Its metal legs were tubular and anchored to the floor. It had to be a compressed air gizmo. I stepped back and looked at the two ex-cotton pickers. I twitched my nose. I looked down and around them. Then the length of the log. I fingered the button on that slingshot in my raise. I said, King fished holy mackerel, boys. You smell that? I was wonder if in some poor, stupid niggas, funky-ass, nappy-headed southern mammy ain't those shit out another square-ass ugly bastard turd. Amos and Nandy dropped their jibs like plantation idiots. They shot an anguished look at the white joker behind the log. I walked out the door. They didn't dig my humor. Maybe it was too in. I slammed into a perfumed linebacker. In reflex, I threw my arms around her soft shoulders. She had the flawless face of Olivia de Havilland. She was bigger and prettier. I felt the fabric of her tailored black suit petal stroke across my fingertips. She was the finest broad I'd seen since my last movie. I wondered if she was a whore. I decided to hit on her. I said, I'm sorry. Ain't in a bitch. Baby, the first time we meet it had to be in a collision like two square. 
Sugar, were you going into this tramp joint? Believe me, there's no action inside for a package like you. I just stopped in to make a call. My name is Blood. What's yours? Her big, curvy legs were wide-tracked. I saw the fabulous shadow of her rear end on the sidewalk. Through the filmy orange blouse, I saw a pink mole on her milk-white midriff. She brushed back a wayward lock of silky black hair from one of the big, electric blue eyes. Her even chompers gleamed like rare china. Her crimson tongue doodled across the cupid bowed lips. She was doing a bit that would have shook up a eunuch. She said, Blood. How quaint. Your idiom is fascinating. My name is Melody. I don't drink in bars. Occasionally, I go to a supper club. I am not looking for action. As a matter of fact, my car is disabled. I was going inside to call for help when our heavenly bodies collided. Is it possible that you're not oblivious to the esoteric aspects of car repair? Mine is there, at the curb. My eyes followed her manicured finger to the sparkling new Lincoln sedan. Everything about her hollered class and affluence. I thought, this beautiful white bitch has class. She sounds like an egghead. With wheels like that, she's probably got a bundle in the darner. Maybe she's got some rich suck in her web. I'll nut roll on her. I'll stay out of the pimp roll until I case her. I'll go sweet William on her. Maybe I can string her out and get all that scratch she's got. 